We have seen it all. More and more extreme weather events. Endangered species fighting for their existence. People losing their traditional way of life. And our forests and peatlands disappearing. The UN estimates that since 1990, forests globally have decreased by 300 million hectares, an area larger than Argentina. And this destruction has led to a major calamity, the release of huge amounts of greenhouse gas emissions that contribute to climate change. With the third largest forested area in the world, Indonesia's forests and agriculture are believed to account for the majority of its greenhouse gas emissions. We are very vulnerable to climate change uh, given our geography. We have one of the longest coastlines in the world and we also have around 14,000 islands. And we have um, a vast tropical forest that we have not uh, managed uh, too well in the past. And uh, also the number of people still below the poverty level is also uh, still very high. Most of them live in these vulnerable areas. Managing economic development while preserving the environment presents a major challenge in a country where millions of people rely on the land for their livelihood. Despite this, Indonesia has pledged to cut emissions by 29% below business as usual levels by 2030, and if international assistance is provided, by up to 41%. However, greenhouse gas emissions have traditionally been difficult to quantify, especially those released from agriculture, forestry, and other land uses in a country as large and diverse as Indonesia. So developing new technologies to measure emissions is going to be vital in the fight against climate change. The INCAS is being developed as a national platform for greenhouse gas accounting for the land sector. It will help Indonesia monitor its emissions so it can design, implement and assess the effectiveness of policies and programs to reduce greenhouse gases. It is also designed to support Indonesia's future measurement, reporting, and verification requirements under a new global agreement on climate change. The system currently covers all of Indonesia's forest and peatlands, measuring net greenhouse gas emissions from Red Plus activities, including deforestation and forest degradation, sustainable management of forests, and enhancement of forest carbon stocks emissions from peat fires and biological oxidation are also included. In future, it will be expanded to cover all land sector activities. The need for INCAS arose after the UN Climate Change Conference in Bali. This is where Red Plus rose to prominence and the idea for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation first arrived on the international stage. Following this, Indonesia and Australia entered into a partnership on Red Plus, known as the Indonesia-Australia Forest Carbon Partnership, and the collaboration to develop the system began. The INCAS is a big data platform for monitoring net greenhouse gas emissions in the land sector. It uses a combination of the best available satellite and ground-based forestry data taken from across the entire country. The data is analyzed by an emissions modeling team to determine annual changes in carbon stocks in the landscape. From these changes, greenhouse gas emissions released into the atmosphere and carbon removed from the atmosphere due to new forest growth are measured. The difference between the two shows the total amount of greenhouse gas emitted by the land-based sectors in Indonesia. These results are then sent to emissions reporting authorities. The information can then be used to meet international reporting requirements and support informed decision-making on how best to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and more sustainably manage Indonesia's landscapes. Managed by the Ministry of the Environment and Forestry, the development phase is being led by the Research Development and Innovation Agency, FORDA. We hope that with this kind of consolidated methodology and, and the modeling, we could improve 
um, the data and in gas will contribute to what do we expect in the uh, climate change um, policy in Indonesia. So it is very, very important. Core technical expertise has been established within the ministry, allowing for the system to be developed and continuously operated according to Indonesia's national needs. We have been working on developing the, the INGAS for several years now, and at, at the beginning we just realized, uh, we, we just working on the uh, very limited uh, information and data we have, but uh, we realized that actually our, our country, uh, Indonesia, already have a very rich of, of data available in the country, uh, but the data actually uh, available for in different of various agencies, which is uh, make us uh, to work more on how this data can be gathered, can be compiled, uh, can be worked uh, together to produce a greenhouse gas emissions estimate. The INCAS also uses satellite data from LAPAN, Indonesia's National Institute of Aeronautics and Space, which is used to assess annual changes in forest cover. We receive we process and we manage the data and then we distribute both the data and the added value, the information uh, derived from remote sensing uh, satellite data. So we collect the data from various sources, mainly from LAPAN's ground station. For the national coverage, we use Landsat data. This is uh, US a satellite. LAPAN monitors forest cover loss and gain on a 25 by 25 meter grid across the entire country. So far, it has generated annual data for a 12-year period starting in 2000. The INCAS remote sensing component will continue to be updated with each new year added to the time series. The INCAS uses the best available data to monitor emissions with the highest possible accuracy. This includes data showing annual changes of land use, management history, forest type, soil type, and various other biophysical data sets. When all this information is run through the INCAS framework, the loss or gain of carbon stocks can be tracked, and from here, emissions and removals can be quantified. The system is being developed according to the guidelines set out by the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The Center for International Forestry Research, C4, which is based in Indonesia, is supporting the development phase of the INCAS in partnership with the Australian government. It provides policy and technical guidance, training opportunities and research support. INCAS is a very complex system, so C4's role is simply to provide support into the Indonesian government uh, for their development and operationalisation of the system. Even in Annex 1 countries, uh, there are very few systems that have been developed for the land sector that are what we call Tier 3 level, which is sort of the highest level uh, of greenhouse gas accounting as recognised by the IPCC. So this is one of the very first to be developed in a non-Annex 1 country to the UNFCCC. So it really is a fantastic effort by Indonesia. Australia is providing funding and technical support for the development of the system and Indonesia's efforts to monitor greenhouse gas emissions. Australia and Indonesia face a common challenge the challenge of climate change. One of the great complexities of climate change is the measurement of greenhouse gases. In Indonesia, with the Indonesian National Carbon Accounting System, we see uh, something at the very forefront of the way countries address this challenge. We need to know how big the problem is before we can find ways to address it. And I'm very pleased that Australia and Indonesia are able to be working together on this. I thank Indonesia for its cooperation, and I think we'll see into the future a lesson for other countries in this as well. And I can tell you the first national easy. results produced by the INCAS in 2015 include an estimate of greenhouse gas emissions and removals from Red Plus activities on all of Indonesia's forests and peatlands annually. This is a complete greenhouse gas account that includes all relevant greenhouse gases, all lands, all carbon pools, and of course, fire. In future years, the system will be expanded to include all agriculture, forestry and other land use activities. Measuring greenhouse gas emissions will be key to all efforts to manage our environment. 
ensuring that each nation is doing what it needs to and has the tools to act responsibly will be essential to reducing the threat of climate change and protecting our natural resources.